Your body has all sorts of complicated processes going on inside it, and a lot of these processes are carried on by incredibly powerful and often incredibly large molecules. Some of these molecules that you're using right now are so big that they challenge the definition of what a molecule is. Technically, a molecule is the smallest group of atoms that performs a function. But sometimes there are really complicated groups of atoms that work together. They're definitely more complex than, say, molecules of water or carbon dioxide, but they're still just one unit. Many of your body's most important molecules fall into this category. Biology refer to these huge, life-giving arrangements of atoms as macromolecules. Some of them you've possibly heard of, others you might never have known were that important, but together, they are what's keeping you alive. And aside from water and glucose and other nutrients that you have to ingest to keep going, these are some of the most important molecules in your body. And hey, I love and appreciate all of them equally. No playing favorites here, but if I had to pick five of the most important molecules that keep your body ticking, I'd have to include these five. And we'll start with the first one I mentioned, deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. It's probably your body's most famous molecule, and rightfully so. It's the one that tells your cells what proteins to make, as well as how and where. Now, you usually hear people talk about DNA in the context of genetics, like they'll say that their hair color or their allergy to cucumbers or whether they have wet or dry earwax is because of their DNA. And that's true, your DNA contains your genetic blueprints, the instructions on how to make you, you. But what's important to understand is that you use your DNA every single time your body creates a new cell. And it does this two trillion times every day. It's made up of pairs of interlocking molecules called nucleotides, building blocks that are arranged in a very particular order. And each of your cells is able to read these sequences of nucleotides as a kind of code, interpreting different segments, which are your genes, as instructions of how to build proteins. And when it comes to your body, proteins are the boss. If you don't count water, they make up 75% of your body weight. There are more than 100,000 different proteins in you right now, and your DNA knows how to make them all. That is a lot of instructions. So it should be no surprise that DNA is by far the largest molecule you have. If you stretched out the DNA in just one of your cells, it would be about two meters long. And this enormous code is readable thanks to another macromolecule called messenger RNA. It collects the recipe from whatever segment of DNA it needs and delivers it to your cell's protein assembly lines called ribosomes. So each of your cells has the instructions to make proteins, but they still need the ingredients to make them. Those are the amino acids. And those 100,000 different proteins that you have, all are made from different combinations of the same 20 amino acids. In a pinch, your body can make about half of these amino acids all by itself, but nine of them, the essential amino acids, have to come from food. And that's where another one of your body's most important molecules comes in. Pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme, and it's a really big, complicated macromolecule that helps digest proteins in food, breaking them down into amino acids. It hunts down the bonds between certain amino acids and just mercilessly rips them apart. And pepsin is very good at its job. It's so powerful that your stomach cells have to produce it in a special deactivated form called pepsinogen. If it didn't, the pepsin would set to work digesting your stomach's own cells. But once the pepsinogen is released into the stomach, it becomes activated by hydrochloric acid in your stomach, and then it's free to wreak havoc. But just how strong is this stuff? Well, if you've ever had the misfortune of having your stomach contents come out of you, you felt it. The reason that things like vomiting and acid reflux are so unpleasant is because they allow pepsin to come into contact with your unprotected tissues. So that burning that you feel is basically pepsin digesting the cells in your esophagus. But normally, and thankfully, pepsin limits its work to your stomach, releasing those essential amino acids that your cells use to build the proteins that you are made of. But all this protein building takes energy, and to get energy, you first need oxygen. You breathe it in, but that oxygen needs to get from your lungs to the rest of your body somehow. Enter hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells, and it's so big that those red blood cells get rid of most of the other stuff inside them, like the nucleus, to make room for just one macromolecule of hemoglobin. And even then, Red blood cells can get so big that they get stuck in your capillaries, which have to dilate to let your hemoglobin-laden cells pass through. Hemoglobin's main function is to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. Each molecule is made up of four groups called hemes that have one iron atom apiece. These iron atoms have a positive charge, so they're really good at bonding with the electrons in oxygen. And when just one of the iron atoms bonds with an oxygen molecule, the whole shape of the hemoglobin changes so that three more oxygen molecules can just pop right into the other hemes, which are just empty and waiting. Then the hemoglobin travels through your circuit circulatory system to unload the oxygen to the cells that need it. And once the oxygen is safely delivered, the iron atoms pick up carbon dioxide. The hemoglobin takes that to your lungs, and the whole process starts all over again. Meanwhile, the cells use this oxygen to crank out another one of your body's most crucial molecules, 
ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is your body's fuel. Your cells manufacture it in organelles that are like power stations, the mitochondria. They usually make it with the help of that oxygen that the hemoglobin has supplied. Of the many important molecules that we're talking about today, ATP is the only one that's not considered a true macromolecule, just because it's smaller. But it still has plenty of moving parts. The most useful thing about ATP is that it has three phosphorus atoms, each of which is surrounded by oxygen atoms. Cramming these combinations of atoms, called phosphate groups, together, forces those oxygens close to one another, which serves to store a lot of energy. And breaking one of the phosphates off releases that energy. Your body is constantly going through loads of ATP to power everything that requires energy. That includes big things like making your muscles contract, and small things like dilating tiny capillaries so that a single red blood cell can get through. So, your cells get their instructions from DNA. Some of the ingredients from the amino acids are kindly provided by pepsin, and then the cells use oxygen delivered by hemoglobin to make ATP for energy. The digestive, respiratory, circulatory, and nervous systems are all working together here. But your body still needs to know when to do what. That is where your endocrine system comes in, and it owes a lot to cholesterol. Now hold up, if you've ever seen a commercial for heart medicine, or diet supplements, or so-called health food, you've probably been subjected to some pretty negative press about cholesterol. It has a bad rap as an artery clogger, but it's also got a really important job making hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers that regulate processes that don't need to happen all the time. When the villain in a movie suddenly pops up on the screen brandishing a chainsaw, it's your hormones that tell your blood vessels to constrict, and your heart to start pumping faster, preparing you to fight that monster or run away. And cholesterol is the first step in making some of these hormones. Even though you hear people talking about cholesterol in their diet, most of the cholesterol that your body uses doesn't come from food. Your liver makes up to a gram of the stuff every day. Some of that cholesterol stays in your liver, where it's used to make vitamin D, but the rest is parted through your bloodstream by molecules called lipoproteins, which are sort of like their personal chauffeurs. And it's these reckless drivers that have been giving cholesterol a bad name. When lipoproteins have too much fat in them, and not enough protein, they can get stuck to the walls of arteries and form plaque that can impede the flow of blood. That's a big problem, but it's not caused by the cholesterol directly. It's the fault of its chauffeur. Meanwhile, the cholesterol molecules that have good, healthier lipoproteins toting them around have better things to do than just hang out on the side of your arteries. These cholesterols are incorporated into cell membranes, keeping them fluid and functioning, while others are turned into steroid hormones like cortisol, estrogen, and testosterone. So cholesterol can be pretty cool, just like you. Looking at these five molecules gives a lot of insight into how awesome the human organism is. If you want to learn more about what's in you and how it works, head on over to Crash Course, where you can take your brain for a nice long soak in biology, anatomy, and physiology, and lots of other disciplines. But in the meantime, thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. If you'd like to help us keep exploring the world, just go to subbable.com slash scishow and find out how you can become a supporter. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe.